Welcome back to the Cosmic Classroom. Today's topic is tides. Not just the tides that um, you heard about in class, not just the tides of the, the relationship between the moon and the earth and the sun, but I'll make it a little bit more exciting and tell you also why are that tides are important in other circumstances. For example, I'm sure you want to hear more about black holes, but for that you're going to need to wait until the end of class. But I'll give you just a little taste of what is it that a black hole does to you. All right? So let's imagine, let's study the tide, tidal effects near a black hole. So let's create a black hole here. There. Well, you can do it as you want. This is my black hole. And let's imagine that the black hole has um, a Schwarzschild radius of 3 meters. And it's okay if you don't know what that radius is. It's just, if you get closer than that, not even light can escape. All right? So it's just a distance that you shouldn't get closer. And except if you can travel faster than light, you shouldn't get closer anyway, closer than that anyway. So let's imagine you are careful. You know that if you get too close to a black hole, you're going to be sucked in. So instead, you keep a distance. So there you are at a certain distance from the black hole. And let's say you decide to stay at a distance of extra um, 5 meters from the black hole. All right. Well, you're a person, you probably have a little bit less than 2 meters. So what will happen is that your feet are much closer to the center of the black hole than your head. Therefore, your feet are going to be pulled more than your head. As a consequence, you will be spaghettified and you will go thin and skinny and dead also, all right? So this is called spaghettification. Fication, and I misspell that, but that's fine. So tidals are very important if you want to visit a black hole. Now I'm going to tell you about tides right here on Earth and what we've been talking about in class. So there are also tides due to the Earth-Moon interaction. There are tides whenever there are two objects interacting, and the size of the objects must be taken into account. So for example, in the Earth-Moon system, I'll draw the Earth here. This is the Earth, and I'll draw the Moon right there. And you know that the Moon is actually much further than this, right? You should be able to fit about 30 times the diameter of the Earth here in order to find the Moon. But anyway, you have the Moon, you have the, the Earth. They are attracted gravitationally to each other. That's why the Moon is orbiting the Earth. With a certain, so they are attracted by a certain force. Now, a little piece of Earth in this side of Earth here, Earth is, let's see, we imagine that we're seeing from above, all right? Earth is rotating this way, we are seeing it from above. If you're right here, you're closer to the moon. Therefore, the attraction is slightly bigger than the attraction felt by the center of the moon. And I'm exaggerating. I'm making the difference much bigger than it is, just, just to, to, to uh, make my point here. And if you are on the other side of the Earth, the attraction is smaller because you are further away from the moon. What happens is that if you're pulling on a sphere and you're pulling more in one side than in the other, it becomes an ellipse. This way. So if you have a sphere, a circular something, imagine that this is the Earth, and I won't, I won't pull at all in that side, but I'll pull here, meaning I'm pulling more here than pulling in the bottom. Look what happens it becomes an ellipse, right? So the Earth creates a bulge in both directions, the direction towards the moon and away from the moon. There is another way of visualizing this, which is if you can think in terms of, uh, think about the pull that Earth feels. So Earth is already being attracted by the Moon and, that's, and, and vice versa, and that's why they are orbiting one another. Now, if you live on Earth, all you see is a difference. You see that there is some more attraction this way than that way. So if you take this, 
the size of this attraction and take away this, and take this one and take away the same, take away what's happening to the center of Earth, you have a stretch. So what happens is that you create a bulge like this. And I'm, of course, ter doing a terrible job of drawing. But you create a bulge like this. So there's the moon. Here are high tides. High tides. Here and in this side. And on top, on, on top of the paper. And on the bottom, there are the low tides. Now, this is the mechanism that creates the tides. However, there is one more important thing in understanding the tides on Earth. As, we, as you all know, Earth is not interacting only with the moon. Earth is interacting with the, with the sun. And in fact, Earth is orbiting the sun, which means that the attraction that Earth feels towards the sun is actually much bigger than the attraction that it feels towards the moon. Right? But again, there is this difference. This side of the Earth, will be attracted more than the middle of the Earth. Right? And this side will be attracted slightly less. In other words, it will also create a bulge. The interaction between the Earth and the Sun will also create a bulge. When you have the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun aligned, the bulge from the interaction with the moon is this way. So is the bulge from the interaction with the sun. So the, the tides add up and they become really high tides to the point that you may have tides of 15 meters high, right? Really high tides. They add up. When they add up, we say that they are spring tides. That's the name that we give. They're spring tides. Both effects are add up. And this only happens when there is a full moon or a new moon. In this case, new moon. If the moon was here, full moon. Right? I hope that makes sense. Conversely, if you have the Earth here, the moon there, and the sun there, what you have is a half-lit moon, so a quarter moon, and the tidal effects from the moon will want to stretch it this way, but the tidal effects from the sun will want to stretch it that way. And at the end, you don't have much stretch at all because they are competing factors. In this case, you have the lowest tides, and these are called neap tides. So that's it. I hope you understand the importance of tides and that tides are not only relevant to our life on Earth, but are relevant in our study of astronomy and we'll come back to it.